Curious about being an Airbnb host? A super host comes on the show today and shares the scoop about the costs of setting up your place, figuring out your price, and how to make money with your space. Welcome to Simplify and Enjoy, the podcast and community focused on helping families have less stress and more options through minimalism and financial independence. I'm your host, El Martinez. This podcast is sponsored by Coastal Credit Union. Coastal's mission is to help you live a better life by offering you a better way to bank. Find out how at bankbetter.org. One of the big shifts we've had during this pandemic is how we travel. We've pretty much gone with renting entire spaces on Airbnb if we're doing a family vacation or a getaway. So far, it's been a really good experience. The value we get from having a place with a kitchen and yard has been a game changer. Now, the personal finance side of me was looking around and wondering, how profitable was it being an Airbnb host? Also, how much work was involved? As a guest, most of our hosts had wonderful local recommendations, and if we needed anything, there were only a text away. But pretty much, they were hands off. It almost seems like the perfect passive income stream. But is that really the case? What's going on behind the scenes? I wanted to find out, and I discovered I didn't have to venture very far. During our last trip to Asheville, we went out to meet up with some good friends we hadn't seen in a while. While we were catching up with Barb and Don, I discovered she was an Airbnb host. Knowing her hospitality, I had a sense that she was a natural candidate for hosting. Airbnb also agrees because she's listed as a super host. In case you're not familiar with the term, it means she's experienced, highly rated, and committed to providing great stays for her guests. I'm happy to have Barb on the show today to share her story about becoming a host. In this episode, we get into setting up her place, figuring out prices, and making her guests stay fun and relaxing. There are some fantastic tips and even better stories, so let's get started. How long have you been an Airbnb host? Let's see. This summer will be two years. Okay, nice. Yeah. We ended up doing it because we were living in a little cabin in a really nice little neighborhood, but it's very scenic. Mm -hmm. It was a safe, good neighborhood with awesome neighbors. We built a smaller house in the same town, but we needed to downsize and get away from stairs and a steep slope. We ended up having this little cabin afterwards and we're trying to figure out, should we sell it now? Uh, The market wasn't terrific. I came up with the idea of Airbnb because I had been seeing what everybody else sees. Oh, you can make extra money. And um, (laughs) we're on a fixed income. Extra money is always a plus if you don't have to kill yourself doing it. Anyway, so I looked into it. My husband's like, "Eh, I don't know about this. You hate people. And (laughs) (laughs) I really don't hate people, but I, I just don't like to get involved in any kind of drama. So I wasn't sure how that was going to work out. I started to research it a little bit and I thought, well, we actually have the perfect setup for it. As long as I wouldn't have to really deal with people face to face a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course I would be available if they needed me. I spoke to him about it and he's like, well, as long as I don't have to do anything (laughs) because he has his own stuff that he needs to take care of. So he didn't veto it. Yeah. I said, well, let's just try it. If we Mm -hmm. try it for a couple months and it completely stinks. I mean, we're not signing any kind of contract or anything. We can quit at any time that we want to. I guess it'll be two years ago this June. Mm -hmm. It was actually right after we moved. We had not taken all of our furniture with us because we were downsizing. I thought, oh man, I'm gonna have to sell this furniture, get rid of it or do something. When I thought about the Airbnb, I was like, oh, I'll get a pass for a little bit. I won't have to move (laughs) any of this stuff. (laughs) So it worked out good. It's a two bedroom, two bath cabin that is entirely on one floor. It has an open concept of a living room, Mm. kitchen, has a 
huge front porch that goes the length of the house that has a you know really nice views and it's very quiet. I just went on Airbnb and read everything I could possibly read. And then I looked mm-hmm. up everything that I could find about what's the worst thing that could happen, which is usually my criteria. <laughs> I yeah, don't want to know good how to know. good yeah. it can be. I want to know <laughs> what is the worst thing that can happen to me so I can be prepared. But we listed it on Airbnb and um, immediately, like the whole summer filled up because we are in an area that has a lot of tourists. Mm-hmm. We have a tiny little motel that has like f- six rooms. <laughs> And the rest of everything in the entire two counties is Airbnbs. So I thought, oh, man, I'm not even going to make it. Nobody's going to be interested in this. And I didn't try to oversell it. I didn't Mm -hmm. say, oh, it's uh, got two twin beds, but you can sleep 12 people. You know, like some of this stuff is ridiculous. Yeah. Four people can sleep great. And there is a queen size air bed, but I'm just telling you the truth. (laughs) You it's know. appreciated as a family that's <laughs> embraced Airbnb. We've, we've done them before, but in the pandemic, we really, that's how we've been yeah. taking our vacations. I appreciate it because sometimes I'll see these and they're beautiful photos. So kudos to the photographer, but I don't know what kind of special lens they use, but I get right. there and I'm like, <laughs> what? Huh, there's the wall. <laughs> it felt so grand. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm looking for space and I don't mind paying for that because I just need to have them decompress and and relax. Yeah. And you don't want to have to blow up the air bed every single time, or you don't want to have one with a slow leak in it. And the kids are complaining in the morning that they were cold and slept flat on the floor. I think too, because we like to travel. And so Mm -hmm. we have stayed in Airbnbs and, and whatever the name they're called all over the world. So we've stayed in enough to know what not to do. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I don't want to take a shower outside unless it's something I specifically asked for. You know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I would go to hip camp if that was the, the case. I guess that's the other thing. Having stayed in a number from really super nice to just super simple Mm -hmm. and traveling with other people, you really do want to have a real firm idea of what you're getting. Because one place we stayed in Italy, the two bedrooms, they were big and everything, but they were so low. It was like a loft, but it wasn't, it wasn't advertised as a loft. And I got a six foot three husband that kept banging his head up against the ceiling every time he got up. (laughs) Well, see, that makes a memorable trip, just the wrong reason. (laughs) Yeah. Or you want to know a place that has really tiny, narrow steps or a spiral staircase or whatever, because you want to know what you're getting. A lot of times I've seen that it's kind of buffed up to look better than it is. And I don't Mm -hmm. like that. I I rather people come in and look at it and it's actually better than they thought it was going to be. That's where really good reviews come in. So that's that's kind of the angle I'm going for. (laughs) So you get more than you paid for. (laughs) So Kind of rewinding back to when you were first starting, what were your initial goals? Like, was this money for maybe your vacations or did you have a particular goal or were you very, let's just wait and see. I don't want to budget that money out yet. Like I said, we built Mm -hmm. a smaller house and so, but that gave us a mortgage. Mm -hmm. So when we did the Airbnb, we could pay the mortgage with the Airbnb money. It wasn't coming out of savings or it wasn't Mm -hmm. requiring one of us to get a, you know, a full-time job or something like that, or go into money that we didn't want to mess with, but we weren't sure how much it was going to be or how much it was going to cost us to do it. Those were all kind of out there. It was just one of those things where you just had to just jump in there and try it and see how it worked out. We got to go with that. That leads into my next question because Yeah, I can see some people say, hey, you know, I can rent out this room. It's easy to set up and I'll just rent it out. But realistically, there has to be some cost up front to fix it up and get it ready for Airbnb. Do you mind kind of taking me one through what you needed to do to get the place ready? And also how complicated or not complicated is it to get on Airbnb and list your place? The getting it ready part was not that hard for us because when we were 
building our new house, we were already doing well, and we're good about maintenance anyway. I mean, we like a house to be maintained while we're living in it. Mainly it was, we had to put in a new parking area. The oh, okay. slope that we live on was really steep, but we did have a paved drive, which was unusual in this neighborhood because most of it is gravel. It's mm-hmm. a paved road, but it is in the mountains. It, it was pretty, yeah. and people will comment on that every once in a while now, but at least it's paved. So you're not mm-hmm. sliding in gravel if you're not used to it. It doesn't require you to have an all wheel drive or a four wheel drive, which okay. a lot of places do. So we did have to spend some money on that. We, at one point we had to replace our back stairs because they just weren't really up to par. I don't know. We, we just weren't comfortable that mm-hmm. they were completely safe. So we made them a little bit wider and, a, yeah. and the treads a little bit bigger. We went around and because this is a two-story, the front of the house is two-story and mm-hmm. it's a rather steep slope. We just made sure that the railings were all in ship shape. As a mom, I'm grateful and, for that. Thank you. Yeah, we don't want to lose any kids or anything. I went around and I made sure that you... I hate to use this phrase idiot proof, but you do have to kind of idiot proof it. I put in those little plugs for, for babies. Cause yep. I don't know if people watch their kids or not. I mean, I'm not there mm-hmm. <laughs> really it, it just updating some things. The furniture was already really nice. So I kind of just added some touches to it, some pictures, some nicer stuff than I've normally seen, mm-hmm. but it wasn't expensive because I'm a, Goodwill shopper and oh yeah, you're you're shopper, really so talented. It was those things just made it look a lot nicer. Like you just stepped into your home instead yeah. of you just stepped into a hotel room or something like that. We did spend a little bit on really nice linens. Oh, okay. I don't like linens that peel up. You know, they mm-hmm. get little peels on them. I bought. They weren't real expensive. I got them from Amazon, but 100% Egyptian cotton. So that they could be washed every single week and they still look like they're brand new. The same things with towels. I like 100% cotton. They're much softer and thicker. Things like that. We stock it with hand soaps and things like that. And I try to use things that nobody's going to be allergic to. We try to get like organic if we can, but just really nice things that maybe people wouldn't buy. Now... I can refill a lot of things because we have a little place called Fillmore and it's bulk oh, refills yeah. for laundry detergent and all that. They're all organic. Nice. We're trying to keep people from breaking out in a rash when they come. Well, I, I love that you're being thoughtful with both from your yeah. own experience. Did you do any research like looking at other in the area, other Airbnbs, whether online or chatting oh, with yeah. them? Yeah. What I saw really made me think I could do it <laughs> because A lot of it was just, I mean, it just, I would have been disappointed if I paid that amount of money Mm -hmm. to stay at a place that looked like grandma's living room and grandma's bedroom and there were doilies everywhere. I mean, sometimes people would just overdo it or either it was Mm -hmm. so bare bones that you look like you need to bring your own stuff. I wanted people to just be able to walk in there and just go, wow, wow. We can just stay here. We don't even have to go out because what I did too in the kitchen, because my husband is a huge foodie. If you come to the cabin, you can make stuff with a blender. There's a crock pot. There's a toaster. There's a, there's a French press. There's a drip coffee maker. Those things weren't expensive to get. Mm-hmm. But people have raved. There's even an ice cream maker and a waffle iron. You can do anything yeah. that you want to do while you're there. Um, we've had people really thank us for having such a well-stocked kitchen. You don't have to go out and buy. Um, mm-hmm. We keep coffee, tea, and breakfast items, you know, really good oatmeal uh, and really good nice. uh, breakfast bars and stuff. Because I hate for people to come in if they come in late at mm-hmm. least you'll be able to have a cup of tea and a, and a power bar before you go to bed. You don't have to go right to the grocery store. And if we know it's a special occasion, mm-hmm. like somebody says, we're coming for our anniversary or we're coming for blah, blah, whatever, family reunion. I don't know what it is. But anyway, if it's an anniversary, we always leave a bottle of wine oh, and a little bag nice. with candy or something and a card and or flowers or whatever. People flip. I mean, I don't think it's that big a deal, but they think they think it's really oh, oh really for nice. sure. I mean, as yeah. a guest, I completely agree. And especially like we've been around 
Asheville during the pandemic when we go on break and something is relatively simple you say like to prepare is such a big help with the coffee oh, sometimes yeah. we're not in town and then you have to go like where's the nearest coffee place and then I got to drive right. in the morning <laughs> and I need coffee to get coffee that's not working for me <laughs> I know and that's what I don't want you because we're like seven minutes from town but it, there's mm-hmm. the most amazing coffee shop but yeah I want you to be able to get up, have some coffee and sit on the porch in your pajamas and enjoy it. I don't want you to have to go out. And so I do leave, I mean, I leave like the coffee mate creamers, but then I'll yeah. leave milk creamers for the people who really want milk like me. It's just, I, I have found it really fun because I'm mm-hmm. not always dealing with people face to face, but yeah. the feedback that I get is just I mean, it's a real atta girl because it's like, you're doing a great job and you're like, what? You enjoyed that? Oh, that makes me want to do more. <laughs> That's the good part of it. Those are all the good things about it. <laughs> I really, I only have one horror story and it, it was just, I would say any horror stories can probably be avoided mm-hmm. by making sure that your description mm-hmm. that you put on Airbnb has no holes in it. Because yeah. it it was somebody who could have, who really did want to make a terrible scene. It was just, it was awful. And it was because she was trying to say that we're misleading in our listing. And she went to Airbnb about us and they looked at it and they were like, nope. <laughs> She's like, I want all my money back and I don't want to pay for cleaning and I'm going to stay anyway. And then I'm going to leave. And we were like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> you better try this scam on somebody else, but yeah. it's very disheartening. I was really hurt about it because we had had mm-hmm. all these good reviews. And then she left us one that was like, you know, I would give you less than 10. <laughs> I would yeah. give you a minus 10. <laughs> well, it, it's funny because sometimes people reveal themselves because like everybody else, before I stay, I look at the reviews and I look at the general tone. Like there's things I'm looking yeah. for. Are the same things broken in every review? Are they like, yeah, the oh, my wasn't goodness. working. You know, and then the other side is, is most of the reviews, you know, positive. And then there's this one review that doesn't even sound like the same place. And then you click on them and then you're like, oh, there's other reviews. They just seem angry. (laughs) Yeah. Well, yeah. Hers was like five paragraphs (laughs) and she only, she stayed less than 24 hours. So, and that was because there wasn't a chain lock on the closet door, but anyway, (laughs) And then they moved all the furniture in front of the closet door. And I was like, oh man, I don't know. And then raided the, the neighbor's yard and brought in wow. tools and stuff and left them. I don't know. It was, it. I just didn't yeah. even want to go over there. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted it to die down. But I did realize when that happened that Airbnb will support you if you're in the right. Now, if you're yeah. not, because they kept saying, do you want to give her a refund? I was like, no. I'm not yeah. giving her a refund. This is crazy. This is a scam. She just wants to stay for free. <laughs> no, there yeah. is nothing broken. <laughs> but I get, I, she took all my toilet paper when she left. So I don't know. <laughs> that was kind of <laughs> ugly. <because laughs> toilet paper was for used to good stuff. <laughs> there is a reason why they give you a review, but there's also a reason why you give them a review. Yeah. And she had one review that was one sentence. It was like, they were good. And I'm like, should I take a chance on this? Oh, sure. This, I mean, somebody with kids, how bad could, how bad could it be? You got to have one memorable story, but I'm glad that overall it's good. I'm kind of glad to hear that story, to know that Airbnb will have your back. Should something like that happen? I, I do want to ask well, you with yeah. the setup, how does that work on Airbnb when you, are listing your place because I mean, Um, at some point they have to verify that's actually your place. Right. Yeah. Well, all I had to do, I I did my own pictures, so I didn't have somebody come out and do it. I have a little experience with it and I didn't want it to give false hope either. (laughs) (laughs) This place looks gigantic, but it's only 1200 square feet. I really wanted to be very honest about what people were getting, but just a little bit of staging. I mean, I'm just leave it like it is like it, like you're going to see it when you walk in there. It's not, not got any extra stuff, 
But yeah, going on Airbnb, I just, they verify who I am. I had to verify who I am and then putting the pictures. I don't remember that I had to show like a property record card or anything like that. I think they just go off of my personal information as the host. Okay. Did you have to do like a driver's license? Yeah. You have to have two forms of ID. Okay. So that wasn't hard to do. And, you know, that, and normally a host will provide a picture to, Mm -hmm. that goes on their, on their little site that will assure people that, you know, it's a real person. (laughs) (laughs) That it's a real person. Yeah. Some of those pictures will kind of worried me. I'm like, maybe I'll stay at some other place. (laughs) I know. Right. (laughs) It's like, I don't know. This looks a little scary. They don't look happy to be on Airbnb. No, but, no. We actually stayed in a place that the people did not look happy to have people staying there. And so Don and I were like, eh, I don't think so. I don't think we'll come back. <laughs> so you set it up and fixed it up the way you like it and, and for guests. Okay. Now's the part. I am curious how people even figure this out. Was like your rates. How did you figure yours out initially? And did you have to adjust it pretty quick? What I did was because there are so many Airbnbs in Mm -hmm. my area, I had the advantage that, that it was a standalone place Mm -hmm. in a very safe neighborhood. And it's on the side of town that's nearest to Asheville. Yeah. So if you're staying like where I live now, it takes Mm -hmm. me 20 extra minutes to get to Asheville. On the other side of town, it's a straight shot, 30 minutes and it's nice. interstate. Very nice. What I did was just did a comparison to what was similar to what I've got and mm-hmm. my setup and the proximity to p- where people want to go. I started out with that and th- my calendar immediately completely filled up. Wow. I I thought, whoa, wait a minute. (laughs) Wait a minute. (laughs) Then I saw where you could do, there's a thing on the, on Airbnb called smart pricing. Mm -hmm. So if you, if there are holidays or there are like in the mountains, people want to come in the summer and they Mm want to come in the fall. Yeah. The winter, not so much, unless it's a holiday. What it does is it raise, raises the rate slightly. You give them the criteria. You can go from here to here. This oh, okay. is the lowest you'll take, and this is the highest you'll charge. Some of them I've seen are ridiculous. I mean, they're to mm-hmm. ask for a crazy amount of money, but mine fluctuates about $25. You're not going to pay okay a whole lot, even for a special occasion. I do give a discount for longer stays, which is nice. I just had one in December, which was great. The people were awesome. That's nice because you don't have to have it cleaned every Mm -hmm. week. Then for a longer stay, they just do their own cleaning and we provide everything, but I don't want to come in while they're there. That's how we did. And we're still kind of tweaking it because it just depends. They're, they're, Mm -hmm. People have shown a lot of interest in it, but I don't want to make it so expensive that it's out of people's range because I don't need to make that much. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to, you know, ream people out. I'm just, I want them to enjoy it too. It's work for us. So we're trying to keep it real reasonable. Well, that's fantastic. I know for a lot of families that are watching their dollars, that's always good. Um, Oh yeah. Speaking of expenses, you mentioned Uh making sure for every booking there's cleaning. What other extra expenses, uh, including maybe wear and tear or any stories about guests that you've had an unexpected expense after a visit? Yeah, we have leather furniture in the cabin. And then we have I mean, like a leather recliner. That's a nicer one. It's not one that looks like at your grandpa's house, but and a nice leather sofa, which mm-hmm. to me is better because people I've heard horror stories of ruined upholstery. So I thought, yeah. well... The kitties have scratched a few places on this, but it still looks good Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it's still super comfortable. We tried to go with furniture that was, couldn't really be killed too much. You know, like I said, anything that needs to be replaced, I'll replace it with something really nice, but I'm going to get that piece of furniture at Habitat. If I need to paint it, I will. But so far there hasn't been too much damage. Like we had these, a young couple that had a couple of kids and I think the mom and dad just decided to party and just let the kids like run wild with blue 
cake icing. Let me tell you something, you cannot get it out. It was just like they had a cake fight, you know, and <laughs> that and the tequila bottles, I know they had a good time. In there. <laughs> That's one of the, one of two experiences that were terrible. Everything else, I mean, I haven't had like people ruining my towels and things mm-hmm. like that. And a lot of people do because ladies that wear makeup and don't use a makeup remover wipe, they'll, th- yeah. that stuff gets, you just have to make it into a cleaning rag because you cannot get that stuff out. But so far we've been really fortunate to have people be pretty careful with it. Pretty nice to our house. It sounds like overall it's been a good experience. It has. Yeah. I mean, Airbnb takes their cut. Now don't, don't Mm -hmm. get me wrong. And cleaning during COVID is more expensive because we don't play with that. We wouldn't do it if we could not make it safe for people, because I don't Mm -hmm. want to go anywhere that people are saying, oh, we clean to a, to this certain protocol and they don't do it. It takes longer to do it because we go in the first day, spray everything down Mm -hmm. with a microband type thing and leave it. We don't even clean that day. We just leave that everything anybody could touch. And then if it's during warm weather, we'll just open the house up and just let the house air out for a solid day. In the winter, we'll just turn the fan on and it's, yeah, you don't want to be in there with microband. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty rough, but I, but I feel good that people are safe when they come in. I provide cleaning, the cleaning mm-hmm. stuff like masks and gloves and things like that, because I don't yeah. want my cleaner to get sick either. She doesn't want to get sick either. So that's yeah, work for good. <laughs> I'm glad you have a, a system in place in it. I think everyone feels good when you put the effort up front, do the right job. Everyone yeah. feels taken care of and you get repeats. I know we feel that way. If we find a place that they put that care that you're putting in, that's going to be our go-to place. The first place we look for, you know, if we come back to a a certain city or anything. We feel that way too. I mean, there are some places that we have stayed Mm -hmm. that were just so, I mean, the host just went out of their way and we Mm -hmm. can tell it. We definitely go back there just because we've actually gotten to know the host. That's kind of cool. You feel like you've made friends all over the world just by, and I actually have had some guests that were just so, they're so funny and nice. One lady, it snowed while they were there. No, no, not snow. It was the leaves. It had, the leaves had just all come down on the driveway and it made it so slippery that they could barely get up the driveway. So Don and I went over to clean the driveway off. And as soon as we got there, she ran out. She's going, here, let me help you. Give me that rake. And so we were all standing out the driveway. Just, it was, it was really nice. I mean, they were just super nice people. Those are the kind of people you're going to tell the really good places to go. And (laughs) nice. Give them a discount. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's kind of fun. Like Mm -hmm. my husband said, you know, I'm not a I'm not a real people person. I'm kind of quiet and introverted, unless I really know you. Yeah. But some of the people we've met have just been so nice that you feel like you made a friend. And we've had international travelers, even in our little town. We've had a lot of people from everywhere. I was really surprised. Like who comes here? Yeah. (laughs) But they do. Where we live is kind of unique. So I'm not going to say that, but I often wonder how in the world do you hear about it? (laughs) I'm I'm glad that overall it's been a a good experience for you. And I appreciate you taking the time sharing like the good side and the bad, and also the investment that it takes to to make it work and sustainable. So I appreciate it. Oh, you're quite welcome. If you're like us, you probably have quite a number of accounts between the two of you, including your old 401ks. It can be difficult to stay on top of everything, especially when your old employer switches providers, which is what happened with my husband. Here's where our sponsor Capitalize can help. Capitalize helps you find and roll over an old 401k into an IRA of your choice for free. They handle the entire process. And yes, that includes calling your old employer or the 401k provider on your behalf. If you're ready to make managing your old 401ks much easier, find out more at simplifyandenjoy.com slash capitalize. Before we wrap up, I want to share a few key takeaways from my conversation with Barb. 
The first one is define what you want to get from hosting. Knowing what your goal is, whether it's covering an expense, like a mortgage in Barb's case, travel money, or having seed money so you can quit your current job. This is important because it allows you to see and measure how you're doing. You want to be able to know if you're moving in the right direction or not. Second, and this is related to the first, know your numbers. If you decide to host, I want it to be a positive experience. One big concern is making sure that this is profitable. You won't know that unless you know the numbers, the cost of maintaining your space, the cleaning expenses, and the income that's coming in. That leads to the final takeaway. You want to treat this like a business. No, it doesn't have to be complicated and it doesn't have to be a full-time job to be an Airbnb host. But if you're looking at creating a successful and sustainable source of income, you have to be thoughtful about it. Different hosts have different ways of running their business. As you heard, Barb cares about giving her guests a wonderful experience while at the same time not having to worry about it. So that's how she designed her business. There are also hosts who have property a long distance from them and they outsource the management of that. There are different ways to successfully host on Airbnb. Just make sure you treat it like a business. I hope this episode gives you a clear idea of what it takes to be an Airbnb host. If you have a space you want to rent out, but it's not quite ready to put up on Airbnb, don't forget we have a free course called 5 Days to 5K that will walk you through how to find, save, and earn extra money for your goals, including sprucing up your potential Airbnb space. Just sign up at simplifyandenjoy.com slash 5K. Special thanks to Barb for being a part of this episode. If you're planning on staying near Asheville, North Carolina, definitely consider checking out her Airbnb at simplifyandenjoy.com slash barefoot cabin. I'll include a link to it as well as other handy resources over in the show notes at Simplify and Enjoy. Next week on the podcast, not only will it be March, but it also means we've been dealing with this pandemic for two years. I don't know about you, but I feel like we've made a lot of shifts ourselves. I'm going to be speaking with a family that was featured in the New York Times who made some major changes, including having a baby, switching careers, handling remote learning for their kids, oh, and buying a house. We get into how they worked as a team, not just on their finances through it all, but as a family. So if you don't want to miss out on that episode, make sure you're subscribed. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Audible, wherever you get your podcasts. Theme was by Staircases, with additional music by various artists over at Audio. Finally, and most importantly, I want to thank you, not just for listening, but being a part of the community. I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care.